everyone. Happy Monday. Thanks for joining me uh, for another craft night with friends. Uh, my name is Alyssa Thomas from Penguin and Fish, where we make cute embroideries for beginners. And I'm here every weeknight, Monday through Friday at 8.30 p.m. Central Time. So today we are starting the embroidery of the month. It is the Summer Fox embroidery. I have the finished, finished feller right here, as well as uh, the kit will be opening that up and using the kit for this tonight. So uh, let's get going and let me know how your weekend was, everyone. All right. Okay, so I am going to get real close again tonight for an embroidery night. So let's zoomy zoom down here. Okay. So thanks again, everyone, for joining. Uh, I'm really excited to get started on this. So this is... I don't know if you guys um, saw the email we did about this, but this is based on this fox that is coming into our yard lately, like a real life crazy fox. It's, it's awesome. And uh, it sleeps in our garden every once in a while. And uh, John did a little video of it. I think we did a link to his Instagram reel. So you'll have to check that out. Uh, but it's so cute, and it's it's skinny. It's got his uh, summer coat on. It's just kind of fun. So, all right, here's here's the kit. Uh, the kits are available now, and they have the pre-printed fabric, um, and you know all the floss, a little ribbon, everything uh, to go get ready for embroidery. We got our needle. Uh, we also have the pre-printed fabric um, by itself, and a PDF pattern as well well so if you're interested in working on this with me I'll be working on it all week and I think we'll actually uh, work on it a little bit next week too I think this will take longer so again you'll get the uh, with the with the fabric and with the um, kit you'll get our little how-to guidebook and here's our instructions on the back of the cover here so all right we got a pile of different stitches here uh, six different stitches um, some things we want to know. Okay, use three strands of floss. So I will be using um, the three strands for sure. We got all our colors here and the blue uh, text that kind of tells you what um, what stitches to use and then the black colored text has to do with the color of the floss. And feel free to use whatever colors you want. Oh, some of you guys um, have seen seen John's video. Ah, that's fun. That's cool. If you haven't seen it, you should go check it out yet. Uh, it's just so cute. Our little fox, he just eats flies basically in the backyard. All right, here, I'm going to tilt you guys up just a hair. All right. Okay, so let's get going on this. I don't think I'm going to iron it or anything. I don't think I really need to do that. I'm going to just get it right in the hoop. Okay. Fun. All right, so I got it in there, and I'm just going to twist a little bit, um, tighten the hoop a little bit, and then I'll, I'll pull on it a little bit more. We'll get it um, pretty taut in here, but not, I'm not, like, really stretching it, really. I'm just getting it so it's not wobbly. I'd say. And tighten it some more. Oh, Gretchen says, I saw the fox. So funny how he or she just jumped. Yep, Arlo, I saw the fox. Neat. Oh, Shirley says the video is too cute. Ugh, it's just such a treat when, when he pops up in our yard there. And he slept in our garden before. So he kind of, we have saw him nap in the garden twice. And he just goes right to the same spot. We have like a little raspberry bush and he kind of kind of goes down there and uh, just chills. <laughs> All right, so I think I'm gonna start with the outline. Um, you could start wherever you want, really. Sometimes I work with the things furthest back and then I come forward, but typically I always start with the fun thing that I wanna do first. So I wanna stitch the fox first. Uh, just because he's kind of the main character here. So I'm going to start with this uh, tiger lily color. That's our orange. 
and we're gonna get our three strands of floss and he's pretty much the back stitch so I have the line here so back stitch um, all of his little bits in here the fur is seed stitch so that's those are just little tiny straight stitches um, and then his nose oh God, he's got tons of stitches actually his nose is a satin stitch and his eyes are a French knots but I'm gonna just start with the outline and we'll come back and do all the rest of that so okay the entire outline is that orange so I'm gonna start there all right get the floss here make a little garbage pile oh I'm already kind of pulling on the floss so let's find the end all right I'm gonna get about 24 inches out here I'm just roughly estimating Boop. okay so let's get um, three strands out of here. So the way I separate strands, I think it's pretty quick, uh, is you um, just grab one strand at a time and you just pull on it, let it all bunch up behind, and then it all kind of separates um, once that strand comes out. And I just do that three times to, I run my hands through it just so it gets straight again and three. I think that's quite a bit faster than trying to hold three strands in each hand and, and pull and uh, I don't know that tends to get more knotted and twisted up than than doing it this way I think. All right so I'm just matching up those ends again running my hand through there and we'll snip the end. All right snip clean that end up but I think I think this fox like how I drew it here it looks just like him like right now he's just skinny and smiley and it has like these big old ears he's pretty dang cute right now so yeah if you haven't seen that that video of John's uh, before be sure to check it out so so cute and silly all right um, I'm gonna start with an away knot since I don't have any stitches on here yet so I'm gonna tie a knot at the end and uh, um, where should I start I think I'm gonna start like at the back of his head and we'll just go around that way eh, good a place as any so I'm gonna start uh, with the way knot I'm gonna go about four inches away of where I'm gonna start from the front and we're just reserving that little bit of thread for later. Okay, so all this we will weave in later, so I'm gonna forget about that now, and then we'll, we'll start stitching. All right, so this is the back stitch. We're starting a little ways from our starting point and going towards the starting point. I've already done one stitch. Then the second stitch, we come up a stitch away and go backwards along the line into the same hole as the last stitch there. And I can do that again slower too if, if you guys want me to do that. At any point, if you want me to slow down or show me show a stitch again, let me know. So our one neighbor said that she saw the little fox come up our driveway the other day and John talked to our neighbor on the other side of us and he thinks that the fox is building a den um, in their yard so he might be like living in our little like in the, like within like the six houses by us or something which is just kind of just so sweet we've been um in the middle of redoing all our siding though so uh, but that's almost done now so I, he hasn't been around lately so i hope we didn't totally scare him away have I ever embroidered a chicken? I have embroidered a chicken. So that was a question we got the other day too. I'm working on some farm animal designs and there is a chicken in there. Um, I have st stitched a chicken like once in the past, but that was like probably over a decade ago. It just seems so silly. I should definitely have a, a fox pattern. So, or I mean not a fox, a um, chicken pattern. So, We'll definitely have one uh, once I get those 
those little that little series of farm animals done here coming up we'll keep you updated for sure this is just the exact color of the fox too this tiger lily color so sweet but yeah we'll definitely be working on this um for oops um Ooh, man, let me know, you guys. Oh, let's go for it again. Okay, so, okay, good. <laughs> I thought I just messed up my, uh, my Facebook video, but I think I'm still here. Hold on, there we go. Oh, our Lois says I'd like to do a chicken or a, or a rooster. That, that'd be fun. But yeah, we'll be working on this for at least the week because there's there's quite a bit of surface area in here, um, all these all these stitches, especially with all the fur and all these little lavender bits are gonna take some time. And we added a little swirl in here. I kind of feel like that's the kind of motion that, that he's been up to, just. Jumping around the yard, chasing flies. We did see him get a, like a little vole one day, but for the most part, he's just been grabbing at flies and bugs. It'll feel like we got a lot done, I think, by getting his outline tonight. I think we can get the whole outline done. We'll see. Uh, when I did stitch the sample, though, it did take around seven hours or so, I think. So I think we will be, <laughs> like I said, going into, into more days here. Well, that's okay. We have a free week next week, and we actually have like two free weeks coming up. So we could definitely hang out and embroider some more. I would like to finish that mandala love embroidery too. We're so close on that. All right, I'm gonna rotate a bit. So I think the next floss um, I might try and do the sewing method because uh, it's a bit faster so this is the stabbing method where I go all the way down and then stab and come all the way back up so two motions down and up whereas with the sewing motion the sewing style of embroidery it's just like almost like one motion so theory takes half the time but um, I'm just used to doing it this way, and I feel like I can really get good, accurate stitches this way as well. But just for speed sake, I might, and for practice sake, I might switch to the other style. Ooh, chicken and chicks on a tea towel embroidery of the month. That would be fun. That'd be cute, actually. I, I do like that idea. That'd be a good um, springtime uh, embroidery of the month. Yeah, that'd be sweet. We're almost done with our first bit of floss already. Time to just chill and stitch for a little. I love once it gets to like the point where, where you're in the zone and just kind of just zone out. 
Oh, Christine says, yes, I'd love a chicken design. Ooh, you have two ro roosters and two hens, and you love any chicken thing. Ah, for fun. So John's um, uh, family just got some chickens, but we haven't seen them yet, but I think we'll be going there um, next weekend. So we'll get to see the little chickens. I'll have to take a bunch of pictures. baby chickens still. I don't know, how long do they stay like little chick sizes? Like how, how quickly do they get bigger? I mean, obviously I know they're always getting bigger, but like how long till they don't feel like chicks anymore? All right, I think this is my last stitch. I'm running out of floss. Uh, let's weave in the end. Dang, these are, I'm like on it tonight. These are some nice uh, nice looking stitches. They're all really, really even. And even the back looks super duper nice. I mean, that back, I mean, kind of wish that was the front. That It looks almost like a split stitch. Or almost like a um, stem stitch on the back here. It's looking nice. Oh, our Lois says about six weeks, then they then they don't feel like chickens any or chicks anymore. Huh. I don't think it's been six weeks yet, so they'll still look like babies, hopefully. Okay, so let's cut away that away knot, and I'll weave in the end there, too. So it'll, I'm curious, um, I'll switch to that sewing method of embroidery next, with the next floss, and I'm curious if they'll be all nice and even, the stitches anymore. So you'll kind of see, in theory, what I mean. Like, I, I, I feel like I can get really accurate, nice stitches with that, so, with that uh, stabbing method, what I did this thread with. If I don't get it quite at the um, sewing method. All right, here's our floss. Let's see how it goes. All right. Oh, it, uh, Linda says, my kids, when they were little, had two chicken pets named cat and dog. Hey, <laughs> that sounds totally like something we would have named them. Uh, Christine says, I feel like they grow up so fast, but they are so sweet. I love them. Oh, your first chicken was extremely uh, aggressive to your family, but the sweetest thing to you. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, funny. All right, so weaving in this end. There we go. All right, sewing method. So for the sewing method, I like having the fabric a little more loose in the hoop, so I'm pressing on it a little bit just to loosen it up. I'm at a little bit of an awkward position here, so I'll probably actually just keep moving, um, moving as I go, just because I can only do the sewing method from like right to left. All right, so down and up in the same motion. So up, I'm trying to get to that next part stitch on the on the line there, and then pulling it all the way through. So that's the sewing method. So I like to start straight down, but you're kind of coming up sideways. I like getting my um, thumb in there to help kind of push down the fabric while I pull up with the needle. And then I can kind of get accurate on that, on the line there. But since I'm only doing that one motion, not pulling it all the way down and all the way back up, this theoretically should save some time. I'm just not as comfortable with it yet. So it's good practice.
these stitches are feeling a little bit bigger than the last ones. All right, I'm gonna let my thread just dangle for a little. Sorry, I'm shaking. Um, it's feeling a little twisty, so I'm just gonna let it relax itself a bit. I think that can actually happen from doing this sewing method a little bit. It it just keeps, um, you know, I think I'm adding maybe a twist to it every time I put it in. I don't know. Do you have backyard? We do have a little bit of lavender in our yard that came up, and it's kind of in the spot in the garden where the fox has slept a couple times so and uh, the lavender is all nice and purpley or it was um, a little bit ago so it just felt right to have the fox and the lavender This tail's actually probably a bit floofier than, than what I drew it as here, but I think we're close. All right. He's coming along. Oh, and uh, let me know what you guys thought. Like, if you guys got the, um, the, uh, kit, the, it, the embroidery of the month kit came with a cute little notepad. Um, oops, <laughs> sorry. Uh, this time around, uh, where I did the little little matching fox through the lavender here. So let me know if you got your little notepad. Um, we'll have the notepads with the kits uh, throughout the month. I think we might even, uh, I think we might have put it up today. Uh, you'll have to check out the website, but we're putting up the, um, the, that Fox notepad and also our project, um, the project tracker uh, notepad sheet. We're putting both of those up in the shop um, as individual items to... So I don't know, I think it'd be fun to have more cute little notepads and stuff. I, I'm always using notepads. Like all my, I used to have, write everything in a notebook, but now I now it's just like random notepads, like random pieces of paper and I keep them all with me. And then when they get too overwhelming, I, I consoli consolidate them down a little bit more. <laughs> and it just seems to, seems to be working. So soon I'll be doing that with all these little Fox notepads. I think I have two more sheets in my current notepad. And I'm, it's not even a notepad. It's like a paper swatch sample book. <laughs> we save all that stuff from a zillion years ago and um, use it for notebooks and that sort of stuff. All right. I don't know. I'm thinking those stitches look pretty even too. So I, I think I'm getting a little bit better at this sewing method. That's making me happy. I think the rest of this floss, there's not that much left. I think I'll do this stabbing method for that. So back up and down, up all the way through, down all the way through. But I think that sewing method, it did go much faster. So we might, we might stick to that, but just for the sake of, I don't have much left here and being able to stitch in any direction really with the stabbing method. I'm gonna keep this upright for a little. All right, I don't think I'm gonna make it the entire length up that front leg. Well, the, the towards us back leg. So we'll get as far as I can with this piece of Lost. Maybe we'll get there. Maybe we'll win that thread chicken. Could be. Yeah. Thought it was feeling a little fuzzy back there, but that's where we put the um, 
fit together. Oh, the untaughtness. So I, I'm actually, I actually made it untaught on purpose just to do the, the sewing method. So the sewing method is when I go in and out in the same motion like this. And it, when you're doing, doing it this way, in and out in the same motion, it's so much easier when the fabric is not taut. Um, it, it really is way easier. So this, this um, thread, I was doing it um, the sewing method for the most part, so I loosened it. But at once I went back to the stabbing method, and I actually have a few stitches left for it, or worth, um, or left in this thread. So I'll do a few more. So the moment I went back to this the stabbing method, I should have just tightened it back up again. But yeah, I, I really do think um, for that sewing method, where you go in and out in the same motion, it, it makes it easier. Like if I try and do that now, it's just, it just feels a little too taut. Like I feel like I'm going in at too much of an angle. Whereas when it's looser, I can kind of push it down and just get a more accurate stitch, I think. But yeah, typically my normal way of doing it is this stabbing motion where you go all the way up and then all the way down in two separate motions. Um, then I definitely keep it more taut. Oh, <laughs> yes. So that, that penguin and the Nora, the, or Noeline, that uh, penguin and the fish movie. Yeah, that, that should be on my YouTube somewhere. It was in my um, email footers for a while. I'm not sure it's there anymore. Um, but uh, yes, that was a little animation that I did in college and um, about John and me. It's about a penguin and a fish that fall in love, but then the fish has to migrate away, so they keep in touch through email. And this is before any social media and, and texting. It's before all that stuff. Oh, Crescent Claire says, oh, I see. I haven't tried that method before. So it's not my first method, like, just because I learned the stabbing method, like where I'm what I was just doing now, just stab it, like going all the way up and all the way down. Um, but I think a lot of people learn the other way first. I think it's maybe a little bit more traditional actually to have learned the sewing method, that in and out motion. Um, but that's relatively new to me. So I'm, I'm trying to get some practice in here and there with it. Um, and I, and I always struggled with it. And I think one of the reasons was, is because I had my hoop my, my thread or my uh, fabric tight in my hoop. Um, but then I loosened it and uh, I had heard to give that a try. Actually, I, I tried that because um, it was because I was attempting to do some hand quilting and that was a suggestion for hand quilting. And I'm like, oh, this is just like trying to do the sewing or this is just trying like doing the sewing method in embroidery and uh, so I started loosening the fabric um, when I did that method and it made it so much easier so now it's not as scary <laughs> for me anymore um, doing it like that and it's something I'm trying to practice because it's way faster so instead of going all the way down and all the way up you're going in and out in the same motion so you're doing it in one motion versus two uh, motions, but it is a little bit more difficult, I think, because you're coming up sideways, so it's a little harder to like hit your mark. I feel like um, that's what I'm trying to practice. All right, getting three strands again. There's another one, two, and three. Ugh, okay, stick into my hands. So I think um, I think we might get through these two strands yet tonight, and um, hopefully that makes it. Hopefully we get all the way around this fox with with those two. We'll see. And uh, yeah, if we make that progress tonight, I'll be happy. So I'll, I'll try the I'll do the sewing method again. Um, I'll maybe do both. I'll go down his foot with the. Um, stabbing method and I'll come back up using the sewing method. So I'll start with um, the taut fabric. So I'm going to go up 
just weaving in the ends again. I always have to say it out loud. One, two, three. Okay. There we go. So the stabbing method, again, is going all the way up and then stabbing straight down and going all the way down. Stabbing straight up. And down. So I'll do I'll do it this way all the way to the bottom of his leg. We'll come back the other way. Uh oh, I think I felt a knot. Alright, got it. I think these little furry guy yeah, his little fur on his legs here is that gray color. stitches will do. Okay, so now I'm going to do the sewing method. I'm going to come up um, at a starting spot though, just because I think that'll make it easier. So now I'm going to loosen, <laughs> loosen it a bit, so I'm just going to press on the fabric a little bit just to like loosen it in the hoop again um, and then then we'll do it did you decide if you'd sell the sew or roller skate pdf oh did I did we make that a pdf um we will I'm not sure if we did that yet so I think uh, I think we will do the roller skate as a pdf as well not just not just the kit but I can't remember if we did that yet. We might not have done that yet. It's, it's available as a kit right now, but yeah, I think I might still have to make it into a PDF, but we're in the process of doing that for a whole pile of stuff too. So we'll get, we'll do that. All right, so here's the sewing method. Um, and uh, you, you can see I moved. I For the sewing method, it only, I'm only able to do it well um, from right to left. <laughs> I, I, I'm not able to do it like where, where my hands at all weird angles. So I'm going to, I rotated the whole piece so I can go right to left. So I'm going to go in and then out on the line. Like, so I'm coming up, you know, right away, the next stitch, like a stitch length away. And it, it really does help by having that um, fabric looser because otherwise there's no way to really um get that next stitch because it's too tight you're like coming at an angle it's hard to kind of grab grab the next spot whereas like here i can kind of push down on the edge and get that to come up right at the right spot oh okay <laughs> uh handmade or hand and embroidery eight okay good um that's Jenna. She helps me out. Um, so, okay. So the pattern is available. <laughs> Roller skate is available as a PDF now. I couldn't remember if we did that or not yet. Uh, so, yep, it's, it's there. Yeah. There's a, we have a big search bar at top at the top. So if you just type, even start just typing in roller skate, the different ones will, will pop up. Oh, good. You see it. That's, that's great. All right, so in and out. And I think this last bit, I will do the back to the stabbing method just cause I don't trust myself from coming out and not like totally stabbing these stitches that are already there. So I'm gonna just be more accurate with the stabbing method. And you know what, let's, let's do the sewing method down, down this leg, see if we can do that. Since I have the fabric a little loose in here yet. So I rotate it again so I can go right to left. There, see, I can just kind of push the fabric down. So it's almost as if I'm coming straight up or a little bit more straight up and down like I'm used to for the stabbing method by just having that looser. And actually, I, I think um, a lot of people who learn the sewing method first 
which is what I'm doing now, the in and out. I think um, a big part of learning that is stitching without a hoop. And I think that's like where a lot of the tea towels are being done without hoops and and that sort of thing. So it does cater to, because of that looseness, it does cater to like stitching without a hoop a whole lot more than the stabbing method. But you do have to be more careful too, like not to pull the thread super tight because you don't want it to bunch up or, or anything either. So I'm, I'm having to be careful with that. But just the speed of it, I'm trying to get better at it. I think we can get two more stitches here. Then maybe I'll, I'll do the stabbing method on the way back up again. That's kind of fun trading off. It's, um, then I can switch off motions of my hand, so maybe it'll help with, like, repetitive stress or something, too. I feel like I hurt my hand the other day. I don't think it was from, I know we did a ton of embroidery, um, a couple of weeks ago, or last, last month, um, but I don't know. I don't think it's from there, but I, I, I think we've just been moving stuff around and, I don't know, I feel like I've almost like strained my hand a little bit, but so far this is feeling totally fine, so feeling good about that. Oh yes, uh, let me know how it goes to um, crafts and clutter. Let me know uh, how you like it. It took me some getting used to, because I'm so used to going like the straight up and down to come out of the fabric sideways. Um, that was tough learning, but uh, but definitely having the fabric more loose in the hoop helped me a ton with that. Oh, Noeline says we, when we learned to sew clothes at school, we had to hand, oh, you had to hand sew all the seams. So backstitch was the only stitch to use for seams because of its strength. Oh, that is so interesting. Oof, that would make an hour of home ec go by. <laughs> Quick if you just had to, well, I don't know, maybe because it depends either very, very, very slowly and unknowingly or perfectly peaceful and too quick. <laughs> if you had to sit and backstitch seams together for an entire period. Oh, I'm glad you had uh, fun watching the uh, st stitching the whole roller skate. I'm hoping to do that. Ugh. It won't be this weekend. Oh, God, it's going to be, like, September. So, you guys, we are moving, like, my whole warehouse <laughs> back to my house. So that is a big change for us. And we have been doing crazy, crazy um, moving of stuff for that. So, um, yeah. So I was... What made me say that is I was gonna I was thinking like soon we'll be stitching I wanted to do more of like weekend stitching and all that um, but it won't be for this weekend or next weekend but after that um, I definitely want to do some more some more stitching um, some more like full length live stitching so I think that'll be fun like beginning um, beginning to end embroidery so like if we did this but like all in one sitting um basically how i make my samples so i i do my sample pieces all all in one giant sitting um i haven't been doing it live for the embroidery of the month since the embroidery month is a surprise but i'm hoping to keep releasing and we just started doing this like releasing non-embroidery of the month patterns that's kind of like the roller skate pattern um just doing some in the middle of the month releases so those will be more like long length things. And actually, I think maybe Thursday might be a day that I do that. <laughs> However, they are putting gutters on our house on Thursday, so it might be weird and clunky and loud. And if that's the case, maybe I'll just turn the sound off. But I do have um, five small little patterns that I want to stitch up. And I might do it all live, and um, so that would be Thursday, theoretically. I might actually do it live and um, 
shoot video at the same time, so we might take little breaks in the lives till I can sh shoot a few little clips. <laughs> Anyway, so stay tuned Thursday. I, I don't know what time, but it might be, like, for a huge part of the day. We'll see. I'll, I'll do, like, a Facebook post or, or, you know, I'll post everywhere maybe before I get started. And we'll see how that goes. All right. Ooh, you get a new fridge on Thursday. That's nice. <laughs> yep, we are fitting everything in in the basement actually so we've we've been doing like massive rearranging and cleaning and we actually um yep well well the basement's gonna be where i work and where um we do shipping and that sort of thing but we did get a we got a storage unit too a big storage unit so i guess that will technically technically be the warehouse um where we store things um but yep We'll be uh, assembling and making stuff back at the house again. Which I suppose it'll be good that I don't have to drive through the winter when the winter comes up again. So that'll be that'll be good. Ugh, I do this every time. About when <laughs> it's a, exactly when I get the thread this long too. When it's like six inches left, I always pull it off the needle here. Ugh, and I gotta trim it too. It's little fuzzles. Zoop. All right. Yeah, the stabbing method, though, is way easier with the taut fabric, that's for sure. Uh, maybe one more stitch? Yeah, we'll get one more, and then I'll weave in the end, and uh, do we think we'll get around the whole head with one more? I mean, we got from like here, well, I think we'll just make it around the head with one more um, thing of floss. So I think we'll do that. We'll, we'll try and get this one last um, strand of floss done. Oh, it's looking so cute on the back too. And we'll, um, we'll uh, stop there for the night. You guys, John is very excited that that you're liking his video of the little fox. He said today, like, oh my gosh, I'm getting like more like views on that fox reel, and I'm like, yep, all the ladies are who are gonna go look at it. It's modeled after, or we're modeling the embroidery of the month around it. <laughs> I actually, uh, when I was drawing this I had his reel going I just had his reel going on loop basically while I was uh sketching this guy out I'm like oh man he's got to be an embroidery pattern immediately all right I'm gonna make this a little shorter pull on that thread all right let's try to go back to the sewing method a little bit see if we can finish this up a little bit faster, so let's loosen it up again. Which, yeah, I always feel a little bit weird loosening it up, too. But, man, it, it really does make a difference. So, I'm going to try doing this around these corners and stuff. Like I said, I'm, I'm not the greatest at whoop, the sewing method quite yet, so it'll be good practice to change direction and stuff. Which basically means I'm just going to be rotating my um, fabric around all over the place. But So if you're getting seasick, let me know, and I'll go back to the stabbing method and stay upright. All right, so now I can just 
jump over to this side there. All right. I think three stitches for that bottom jaw will do it. stitch. I think we got it. He should have a little tongue or something. It was, we didn't, the first time we watched him in the yard, it was actually the second time. The first time he went to the side and it grabbed a little vole um, right between our neighbors and and our fence we there's like grapevines and stuff there so we just jumped in the grapevines and ran off with a like a little vole but the other time he hung out in our yard for over an hour um he just bounced around the yard i mean that's where john's video is from um he hung out in the yard and he just kept getting flies from the sky and then getting like something that was like a grasshopper that was in the ground and he'd just be chomping chomping you know with his mouth always something <laughs> always caught something and then you know he'd scratch his neck a little bit so he probably has fleas or something um but then uh, and it was hot outside too so he's just like panting and eating them bugs and uh then he went in our driveway by our garage where it was shady and he just laid down and <laughs> just like a cat just like plopped down He's definitely feels, they feel like they're like half cat, half dog. So cute. Then the next time we saw him, he just hopped over our fence and in, into the garden. Our garden has a fence on like just chicken wire, just because the squirrels and well, the squirrels still get in there, but the rabbits got in there and all, and all that. So we, we put up a little fence, but he just whooped right over the top of that. Like it was nothing and uh, took a nap in our garden. And then I think I'm, I'm gonna do the ear now and just nap there for a while. And then he he heard us <laughs> cause we were just watching him. And I think we, oh, we were hanging up a picture. So we're like, eh, we gotta go back to hanging up this picture. So we were hammering on the wall and he heard that. And so he, he jumped over the far end of our fence which was twice as tall. So like four feet tall and he just went straight up and straight down and was over it like like nothing but just so cute i hope he comes back when when all our house construction -y stuff is done sweet little guy i want him to stay all winter too we had two foxes last winter like you know we saw him maybe twice all winter but ugh, what a treat I mean, like, we live in the city, basically, right? So it's just so funny to have, like, real nature <laughs> outside. All right. Oh, what is a vole? It's kind of like a mouse without a tail is kind of what I think about it. It's, it's, it's smallish. I guess a little bit bigger than a mouse. Um, but yeah, they don't have a tail really, or just like a nubbin. In the, in the spring, we can see all the trails that they dug, um, before, before, um, or underneath the snow before the snow melted. Oh, put a bowl of water in the yard. Oh, so we do have, we do have water. Oh, I guess it's not really all that cool, but we do have kind of like a little bit of water sitting in the in the um garden we should dump that out and kind of fill it back up again it's kind of like a bird bath i suppose it's not but that the birds use it for that um oh, i'm kind of back to the stabbing method we'll do the stabbing method for the for the rest of this um but yeah he uh, uh maybe he'll I, I haven't seen him drink water from that but maybe if we um freshen it up again Maybe then he would. All right, so 
we might get there with this much floss. I'd like to hope so. So I think we're gonna just win at thread chicken. If it and if we're seeming like we'll we're like a little too like a, like I'm gonna only have like two stitches left, then I'll switch to that back stitch, then a forward stitch. That kind of preserves the thread a little bit more. But I don't know. I like just I think the back stitch by itself looks a little bit nicer. But yeah, we'll see how well we did here with thread chicken. Always fun when we win that game. Oh dang, Amy says we have a black bear in our neighborhood. Eee, that's a little more scary. <laughs> oh god. We have I haven't seen a deer in our immediate neighborhood, but um I know they're around, um, like a little further out, or a little bit more tree area, burbs. Um, we we do have turkeys, though. They just kind of wander all around, and you gotta kind of pay attention when you walk that there's not like a turkey, a giant turkey in the yard right next to you. I like you could just walk into a one almost sometimes, and you know that'd be scary because they're kind of mean. I think. Uh, but yeah, so just like how this fox is like, oh, there's a random fox in our city backyard. Uh, that's how, that's how these turkeys are too. Oh, we have tons of floss left. We're actually in great shape. And you know what? I think I'm going to actually keep using this thread. I, I have definitely maybe four or five more stitches worth in here. I'm going to jump right to his back fur. And that's kind of why I started at the back of his neck. Because then when I get all the way back around, if we had extra, we could just start on the on the fur right away. I think why not? So I'm going to just use up this thread. So this is seed stitches now, which really is just a bunch of straight stitches. And a straight stitch is just coming up uh, at the beginning and going down at the end. That's literally it. So that's, that's a single tiny little straight stitch and a pile of them together is a seed stitch and really a seed stitch traditionally I think is more of a tool um, to add like padding underneath like a other stitches like a satin stitch so if you want your satin stitch a little poofier you add some seed stitches underneath it I think it's technically more of a tool like that but I think it's perfect for fur so I just I like having all these little baby seed stitches for fur. So it's all orange. So I'm just looking at this again. It's all orange. And I'm kind of looking at this because they get close to the to the back, but I think I can see all the stitches fine. I don't think we've covered them up. It doesn't get to where it starts getting gray in it till it gets um till it gets like down here. So um I'll be out of thread by then, so I'm not even going to pay attention. I know that, that they're all going to be orange for a bit here. I'm going to go till this thread is, is done, which actually might be quite a bit of his back here. So we did label this kit. And I don't think it's labeled on this one yet because I think we brought this home before we made that decision. Oh no, it, it does. So we did label this one um, basically an advanced beginner. So this is a two dot kit uh, versus our just, most of our kits are almost all are the just the one dot, like a basic. Um, we did label this two and that's only because it uses a few more stitches and we've pretty packly, um, Den or we've pretty densely packed, <laughs> packly densed. We've pretty densely packed the um, stitches in here. Like the lavender, those are a lot of small little um, lazy daisy stitches. We got, you know, a chain stitch, French knots. We just have a lot of stitches in here. So it's gonna take a little bit longer. Uh, so we, we put it at a two. But really in this case, all all we mean by that is it's just going to take a tiny bit longer than if you just like stitch like, you know, our llama kit up, for example. And it uses, you know, a couple different stitches. But I'm totally confident that 
Um, you'll be able to do it yet, even if you've never stitched before. Um, I know a lot of a lot of you here have have for sure, but still welcome to ask any questions. We do have that raccoon um, free pattern, the the stitching raccoon, where you get all the stitches uh, emailed to you. Like, well, not all the stitches, but like 14 different stitches, all the stitches that we basically use uh, most of the time. So that'd be great if you're just starting, which is totally free on the website as well. But yeah, and then, you know, we go through some of these kits here. So the embroidery of the month, we'll, we'll continue to do every single month, uh, like the third week of the month, like we are doing here. Some of these other kits that I'm releasing, we probably won't do them all live like this, but they may pop up other places in little bits, like on, on um, TikTok. And, um, you know, I might just do a very long live stitch along that just pops up here and there. Uh, but mostly it'll probably be short and little videos, but I do take video now of, of all the stitching. So they'll pop up here and there. And every once in a while we might bring one out for a free week. But yeah, so Embroidery of the Month will always stitch together. The other ones will be, the other like new patterns that we release will be a little bit more random. That's what I guess I'm trying to say here. All right, we're getting there with the thread now. Yeah, this is quite a bit of fur, but I think it's just fun adding more of that orange. That fox is just such was such a pretty orange color. I hope he comes back. I miss him. All right, I think we'll get these four little stitches going back up to his back, and then we'll weave in. We'll weave in the end here. And so tomorrow, actually, we got quite a bit, quite far on those stitches. So I'm hoping, geez, I'm hoping we can easily finish the rest of his fur and his little ear fur. And I, I think we can easily finish. Eh, Easily. I think we'll finish um, the oops the uh, fox tomorrow, and then I think what we'll stitch next is um, the cute little the squiggle that kind of goes behind him here um, to add a little like motion to the piece and stuff. I think we can get like one more stitch. Uh, I think that we can maybe even start tomorrow too. That'd be great. Cause all these little baby lavenders, those are gonna take us some time too. But I'm feeling good on time. I maybe we will be able to get this done this week yet. In my head it's like, ugh, that took me like seven hours. We're probably gonna go into next week, which would be totally fine. But hey, maybe I just took too many breaks while I was stitching <laughs> and other stuff too. Or maybe whatever movie I had on, I was watching it a little bit too much while I was stitching. Who knows? Uh, but we'll see. Maybe we'll take seven hours. But I feel like we got a lot done tonight here. Oop. Oh, yep. So, Amy, the, the ones I'm doing on TikTok, they're not up on um, YouTube yet. But I will be putting them on YouTube. And I am planning on... Um, doing it as Instagram reels and stuff too. I'm just not quite in the good habit of <laughs> making them go in all the places yet, but uh, that is something I definitely want to do. So you can expect them in uh, YouTube. It'll probably be in the YouTube shorts area. So uh, if you go to my page, I think there will be like a little thing that says shorts. Um, I think in there, I, I, I have to dig into that yet. It's all so new. <laughs> But all right, you guys, here we are. I think we made great progress tonight. Um, again, here's the what the final piece will look like. So tomorrow we'll finish all of his little fuzzles. We'll finish him completely. And then, yeah, we'll start this little squiggle through. I think that'll be fun. And then I think all this lavender is gonna be really, really fun to do too. 
and we got a few little monarch butterflies, and then all the little flies that he's munching on. <laughs> all right. So... I uh, think we'll call it a night at that. So thank you so much again for joining me for that. And be sure to check out if you did like that little notepad. Um, the notepad is included in the kits just for the month. Uh, the the um, this this kit because it's the embroidery of the month. It's our special like free gift um, for this month's embroidery of the month. Um, but yeah, I think it's also we also have them in the shop now too. If you want just the just the notepads, they're. They turned out super cute, and I want to make a whole pile more. So if you have ideas for notepads, let me know. Uh, but they're, they've been fun to, fun to make lately. <laughs> so, all right, you guys, thank you again. And I will see you tomorrow at 8.30 p.m. Central, uh, again, here on either YouTube, TikTok, or Facebook. <laughs> Maybe more soon. We'll see. So, all right, have a great evening. Good night.